What is up, down, and sideways, you lovely individuals? It is another episode of League of Mike, Eric and Mark here with you as we roll back into summer split action. Both the LCK and the LPL alluded to it in the last episode. T1 gets a grand total of, what, 48 hours break? Before they're back on the rift, luckily for them, it was against an 0-6 OK Savings Bank Brion. But that didn't stop T1 from having a little bit of a vintage for fun time on the rift, especially in games 2 and 3 in this one. Yeah, in game 1, you absolutely were saying to yourself, this is the EWC champions T1 rolling on through, keeping that momentum in check. And this was absolutely one of those games that you look at the other side at OK, OK, bro, and you go, OK, bros, what was going on in this one? It was a full uh, dismantling from T1. But then you enter game two, and yes, maybe a little bit of the jet lag entering in. Maybe it's the T1 for fun game in, in, in the series that we sometimes see happen through. But absolutely one of the ones where some happy and over-eager mistakes, I think you'll call it, uh, from T1 trying to capitalize and put this series to rest doesn't go that way. And we get ourselves a game three, which for another one in a row, we're getting Guma Yusi on a different AD carry rolling with that Zaya Rakan in the bottom lane. Yeah, we got some Caitlyn in this series. We got the misfortune for Bro. Obviously, Samber and Karis sub in for games two and three, and Bro look infinitely better. Instead of Faker picking up solo kills, it's him jumping in 1v5 and dying on the Tristana. But uh, yeah, eventually, T1 is able to close this one out, but it's even a competitive uh, third game. But again, honestly, I was half expecting T1 just to straight up drop this series because of the absolute whirlwind that their schedule has been over the last week or so. So you're really not taking a ton from this series other than, yeah, Guma can still play any AD carry in the game. That's my main takeaway. Yeah, this was obviously one of the kind of lemons on the schedule in the sense of understanding, number one, this isn't going to be super hype between Bro and T1 where they expect to be in the standings. But number two, coming hot off the backs of the EWC on that jet lag path for T1. I don't think anyone was really going to take all that much away from it either. Either way, the results really went. You weren't going if this was the full stomp from T1. We're on the path. Give us Gen G right now. And at the same time, if they lost, you knew that there was going to be not excuses, but reasons, I'll say, for why a uh, performance could have been less. T1, they manage it through, they pick up the win on here, and they'll keep going on uh, this summer split. One other thing of note for this series, for me at least, we get Zeus on Cassante a couple games, which, you know, he's not the most terrifying Cassante player that there is of the LCK, but we finally get him not on that pick, and the NAR game... It feels like the first time in over a month that you actually see Raid Boss terrifying to match up against Zeus that's up like 3k over his opposition. It's it's like going to this restaurant and looking at the menu and not understanding, oh man, I don't know what any of these dishes are or any of these ingredients. That's what it's like watching Zeus on any of these tanks that we've really seen because you don't know what the performance is. You don't know whether he's gonna give you the Zeus you know, the God of Thunder, or if it's gonna be a liability for the team, not a pick that is gonna work out. Nar, on the other hand, that's like looking at the menu and going, oh yeah, cheese, pizza, you know, pastas, all meatballs, everything. You know exactly what is on that menu and in those dishes. The Nar is a comfort pick and a comfort one, I think, as well, for the T1 fans watching Zeus play. The schedule doesn't get any, you know, shorter or easier for T1. They're back on Friday, and this time the level of competition goes up to Hanwha Life. So hopefully they get, you know, maybe take a day off. Maybe take Thursday off, God forbid, for some of these guys. You got to find some time off. You got to find some time away is the important thing, I think. No matter how much you want to practice and be locked in and have that expectation, Having that breather, having that step away, having that gap is an important thing, I think, in any type of profession. And I hope that's being taken into account for T1 because you're right. That step up, it's pretty darn immediate, right into the category of playoff caliber teams of the LCK. And Han will life that not only is a playoff caliber team, but one that has something to prove, needs to make up ground, needs to climb in the LCK. And one of the teams they're looking to climb over is, of course, T1. The most recent team to actually take down T1 in a series 
KT Rolster, don't look now, but we're back on the track. Things are aligned. We're on the uppity up on this KT Rolster coaster. Third win in a row against Nongshim. Okay, it was a close game too, but the disaster 0-4 start for KT now seems like a bit of a distant memory as they slowly start coming back online. It's important for that to be a distant memory for KT Rolster because it was such, such a bad slide to start out this split and really set back any type of expectations or hope for this lineup and what they could do or how they could improve on the previous split. The results against T1 has certainly propelled them into that category. And yes, Nongshim is not certainly a team that you're going rah, 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 we beat Nongshim about, but you absolutely do take this victory if you are KT and you keep stacking it up to keep climbing up that ladder the important thing and like anybody knows you got to make it all the way to the, that top of that ladder and you better not be holding down the b button or the circle button where you're then all of a sudden doing the quick slide down the ladder that can't be going on for kt it's got to be that consistent progression for them and obviously uh I mean, most of the guys performed at a higher level. Barrels inting a little bit less. Piosic, even on things. I didn't think I'd be seeing Piosic look so good on Ivern, of all things. We're used to seeing him on a Viego or some of these more carry-oriented champions like the Kindred, where he's popping off. But seeing him on a supportive pick like Ivern be able to play at a high level, two thumbs up there for KT. And the good news now for them, the next two weeks, basically, on their schedule are against these lower tier teams. They play Fox twice. They got DRX in there, Nongshim, and then finally T1 thrown in that mix. But if they go on a bit of a run against these lower tier teams, they can be right back towards that potential top four category, assuming they take care of business against these bottom feeders. And that focus, that performance needs to be locked in for those bottom tier teams of the LCK in this stretch for KT. You mentioned Piosik and what he's playing. The way that he has played and the way that he has enabled the rest of KT Rolster, that's a key for me. Because when KT Rolster was looking like a promising team, one you could possibly have as one of these other options in the LCK, was when Piosik was really showcasing what he could do, the type of journey, the growth that he has shown over the last you know two years, going as a world champion, the whole LCS experiment, and then coming back. He was strong at moments in the spring split, and then it faltered, and the rest of KT faltered as well. This summer split, this resurgence, he has been a big part of it, and I'm looking at that continuing into these next couple of matches, regardless of where in the standings they are going to be. But if if KT keeps you know leveling up to the close to the form that we expected them to be heading into the summer split, all of a sudden. You got the most stacked playoff picture top six in the LCK that we've had in recent memory, especially when you throw in the level that Kwangdong is playing at. They got Genji on the docket this week, so we'll really see what power level they're at. But if KT sorts things out, all six of these teams are absolutely deadly in Korea. It's going to be a party in the playoffs for sure, because no doubt you're rolling Genji. You got t1 you got a hanwha life and a d plus kia in there kwangdong freaks making their their name known in that type of category and now you're throwing in kt rolster as well there ain't that many seats at the pool bar you got to figure out who is going to be the ones getting in kt rolster in this type of form that is absolutely one of the teams that you could see deserving of one of these spots at the pool bar six teams that you could be talking about as Honestly, world's potential, or at least world's caliber coming out of the LCK, which is an absolutely terrifying prospect for a playoff push and obviously the inevitable gauntlet run that'll get going in the LCK. A couple of potential world hopefuls caliber, depending on any given day, is the classic fraud matchup. LNG versus Weibo Gaming, who were both actually 1-0 and heading into this matchup. Obviously, a lot of history and crisscross between these squads. You got Zhao Hu going up against Gala, former teammates. Tarzan going up against his now former squad and scout. And this series definitely delivered on the entertainment factor. You had back-to-back -back games with uh, Gala and Zhao Hu kind of going Head-to-head, -head, making game-changing plays. Gala gets a pentakill on Ezreal. Jahu gets a quadra kill on the Lucian mid in Game 2. It was real fun seeing those two go back and forth.
It was until we got to the game three and it changed really about the back and forth between Xiaohu and Gala, which was the entertainment part of it. As you said, former teammates finding these performances, trying to prove not the fraud team in this situation of the LPL. And then you move into game three and it really becomes a story, unfortunately, about Tarzan in the jungle and what was going on with him because it is that polar opposite performances in game two of the brand that is the incinerating nightmare he can be in the jungle setting a blazing path all across all across the rip and then you get game three and there was absolutely no heat this is a winter time brand rolling through the jungle is the way that one felt for game three uh it was a little bizarre the third game here because Weibo has a gold lead look like they should be in control of this game and then just kind of start oh. giving up objectives without contesting them here's a soul for you go ahead set up for baron it honestly felt like peak and by peak i mean the worst eras of the lcs where teams just roll over and are waiting for you to make a mistake and maybe you'll capitalize on that but they they just roll over and let lng win the series they played like a team that thought they were behind three, 5,000 gold, as opposed to the team that was ahead three, 5,000 gold in the way that they arranged for any of these objective fights later on as you lay out. Essentially, free for all for the Hex Trick Dragon Soul picked up all through for uh, the LNG squad. And then on the other side, you're looking again, Baron, you want Baron? Take that too. That was another freebie given over. And it was one of those situations where the gold lead, the advantages, the power, even if it wasn't necessarily a crazy amount, it certainly was in the hands of Weibo Gaming. And they didn't show any sort of awareness or proactiveness in that regard and absolutely taken to the cleaners by you boys on LNG. And it's, you know, anyone being taken to the cleaners by LNG is kind of a weird prospect based on how they were playing in the first round of action. They have looked much better here in the... Uh, uh, I don't even know what they call this group stage regular summer split where they're in that winter side they've looked much better and now we're on this bizarre land where anyone's legend is potentially going for three and zero to be at top of the table LNG is at the top of the table at two and zero but thankfully if you've been a little disappointed with the messiness that's been going on in the LPL early in this second round of action top esports and Billy Billy Gaming three four days rest coming back from ewc we get them going head to head in what actually feels like the first actual marquee iconic matchup in the lpl this split oh and i can't wait because top esports i think in a lot of people's minds has really solidified or reclaimed that spot they might have lost or slipped up in their positioning come of what, how their msi performance went given what we have seen since then in the lpl and then on top of that with kind of you know again checking how much we're we're valuing these performances but still international exposure at the ewc and how they performed there a lot of people back on the top esports bag uh, wagon and then you look at blg this is a squad that certainly i think didn't necessarily show us how clean how dominant they can be at the ewc and before that you could look through that lpl uh split in time since msi and say sure they've been good have they been great have they been unbelievably impressive i don't think that's necessarily the description that you'd be using for them they haven't had to be is the other side of it this top esports matchup they certainly will have to be on that day yeah deserves that they both need to actually be tested within the LPL. There's going to be an added little flavor or angle to BLG with some rare off-season or roster moves potentially happening. Rumored, not rumored, confirmed now that they are bringing Way over from RNG to join BLG. Obviously, a little bit of a mystery, confusing move. I know Jun hasn't been great since msi but shaking up a team that just made msi finals just won the spring split we don't know if way is going to be immediately starting over jun or if he's just kind of there to put pressure on jun to make sure he plays at a better level it is a wild move and one that is bringing up a lot of the question marks and and you know kind of wondering and it's not a question mark on you know why do you make this move i think everyone is understanding that this is actually a pretty darn good move for BLG, it's looking at what is the play out from here is the point of this move that people are questioning. Because as you said, Jun has struggled since MSI. He has not looked necessarily the same or the same type of, of beast he could be for this BLG team. 
and then even worse so i would say at the ewc but again how much are you really evaluating uh, you know valuing those performances and whatnot in this consideration and then you look at the side of way because for way everything with rng has been so bad it's hard to really sift through and find the talent and performance but what you know about him from before and when things are good and when the opportunities are there he's one of the best in the lpl i think you look at all the opportunities and all the other junglers and kind of where they are at away playing at his best i think the only guy that you're taking over him is kanavi and that's to say how good way has been that he's in that type of tier where kanavi is the trump card to what he can offer for a team that's going to be the question for blg do you think that you can get that type of performance from way all of a sudden in the middle of this summer split and you know integrate with the roster and everything else or is this more so just you know the insurance marker the change up the switch up curveball type of happening if jun continues to struggle yeah and it's obviously a gamble to think way was it just a recipe of RNG being terrible and he can just immediately get back to that peak MSI level where you were talking about him in the category as one of the best junglers in the world? It probably helps when your junglers will all the, or your laners are all of a sudden guys like Elk and Bin who you don't have to worry about whatsoever. So yeah, I'm excited to see if Wei can get back to that level. And yeah, if not, they can still ride the Jin train to a title, apparently, based on what they did in spring. But obviously... Top esports on the docket. We'll see how quickly they're willing to be subbing Jun in to have an impact on the squad immediately. We got to wait a little bit longer for LCS to roll around, but LEC is right back into that playoff push. And if you didn't feel good about G2 or Fnatic at this recent event matching up internationally, well, let's put some faith in SK and BDS, who are the first ones lining up. SK matching up against Team Heretics, where they should be huge favorites. And I want them to deliver. I want these squads that finish 1-2 to showcase why they did perform in these best ofs. Biggest mismatch for me is this bot lane, the new bot lane for SK, Rahel and Luan. You're going to need a serious step up from Flacid and Trimby if Heretics have any chance in this series. I, I, you know, I'm just telling the LEC, I'm bringing my glass of milk. I want to experience the spice. I want some heat coming through in these playoff matches. And I don't care who or where it's coming from for them. And you laid out SK. I will take a dash of the SK hot sauce if it's rolling through good in that playoff series. Because when you're looking at it for teams like SK, BDS, these teams in the LEC that didn't go to the EWC and are at that forefront of the standings, you want to see that heat. You want that power coming through to showcase that there is something still in the LEC region compared to what you saw from Fnatic and G2 at the most recent showing. And then we're on the Fnatic and G2 side, which you could even play off of it. Are they going to be hungry? Are they going to be angry? Is there going to be revenge? Are they cranking up the stove too? That's got to be the question that you're looking at for the LEC where is the heat coming from? I don't care where, but there's got to be some in the LEC. Is it SK? Is it BDS? Is it going to be those other two classic kings? I can't wait to find out. It's how do you interpret what you saw at the EWC? And honestly, going back to even what you saw at MSI, for um, some of the squads matching up against G2 and Fnatic, Giant X and Carmine Corpse in that matchup, they might go, these guys look beatable. We, we're going to be underdogs in this matchup, but we should be able to take them down. And if you're BDS and SK, you're watching these matches and saying, that's not the best representation of our region. Wait till we hit the rift. I want to see SK and BDS not just winning these first round matchups. I don't want no close back and forth three game set even. I want domination out of them because they dominated the majority of the group stage. I think SK should be even bigger favorites against Team Heretics. BDS are going up against Mad Lions, who obviously earned their spot, had the 3-0 in the final week to ride some momentum, but momentum or not, BDS should again be huge favorites. You can talk about the bot lane advantage with Ice and Lebrov, but I'm looking top lane in this one. I need some level up from Mirwin because we were so hyped about this guy and his crazy picks early on in the year, and that's kind of faded away. Now he gets to match up against Adam, who we still know loves to have some of those spicy picks. So I want to see that winter split Mirwin show up in this series. 
if we're getting anywhere close to a full series, it's going to be because Mirwin shows up because there's something creative in that top side. Otherwise, it is a complete mismatch. It is a complete blow out of the water as, as you've laid out from where you can see this one playing out. He has to provide that. And I think that was something that did get lost in all these things from that original uh, winter split that came through from Mad Lions where we were on board, where everyone thought this is great. The potential is there for this young squad that El Yoya has brought together. And it all came crashing down. And part of that is Merwin's performance, is the confidence in playing these uh, different champions up in that top side. Having an X Factor, having a difference maker, that is something you absolutely need if you are the Mad Lions Corps because you better believe that you can bet your bottom dollar you got that on BDS. We'll see if that momentum from them kind of stealing one of these spots carries over uh, into that matchup against BDS. And then... Uh, the weekend ones, they were nice enough to give Fnatic a G2 both that extra day to recover. But obviously, they're still going to be big favorites against Giant X and K Corp. But the biggest question mark there is what level of Fnatic is going to show up? Are they tired of everyone trash talking them internationally? They were slumping heading into this matchup. It continued at EWC. We need to see some life from Fnatic. We are in round seven, round eight of a title card fight in, you know, boxing, UFC, whatever you want to put it. And this is Fnatic and G2 that are just coming fresh off a round where they got knocked. They got popped in the mouth and they're stumbling around. The question is, is it Fnatic and G2 that find that championship pedigree and steal themselves to getting back into the ring and get that resolve to fight on through the rest of these playoffs and show that type of tenacity that they have to have or is it going to be that they are on that uneven edge? They are knocked out of sorts from the various uh, losses, you know, that have come through from the EWC. And then it does it continue into this playoff series. It seems like a classic scenario where Fnatic goes to their last life. Losers, bracket, they don't show up in one of these best ofs. And then they finally go, oh, we're going to be eliminated? Oh, I guess we should really start trying and take this seriously and go on a loser's bracket run. But... Uh, we need some signs of life from them because we haven't seen it in about a month or so from the black and orange. But that is it today for League Unlock. Eric and Mark here with you. Beauties, thanks for hanging out with always, and we will catch you on that flippity flip.